Today, we're going to talk about searching inside the finder, um, looking for documents on your computer. And before we do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what underpins the search engine on, on, on a Mac, and to be honest, on an iPad or an iPhone as well. And there is an engine which is the Spotlight Search Engine. And the Spotlight Search Engine has been around actually from before Mac OS, or rather uh, Mac OS 10, it, it, Apple introduced it around about Mac OS 8. And it's, it's a technology that indexes your entire hard drive. So whenever you do a search, it's not searching your drive in real time, it's searching an index file, which is much faster. But the thing that's really sexy about Spotlight is it doesn't just index your file names, it also indexes the contents of your files. So if you get a file name wrong, but you know a word inside the file, it'll search for that too. If you've got images, um, we've talked about metadata before, let's say we've got an image, um, an image might have, if it was taken on an iPhone, might know when the picture was taken. So that the, the date and time might be attached to that picture. It might know where the picture was taken. It might know what the shutter speed was. It might know what the aperture was. It might know whether the flash fired or not. And all of this in information is indexed and saved with your Spotlight index. Now, this obviously speeds up the search um, exponentially. So why don't we just use Spotlight to find files? Well, I'm going to show you why. If I was to use Spotlight, we're going to do searches today on um, the word proposal. So I'm going to use the word proposal, do a search, and my Spotlight goes ahead and it starts searching for things. Now, the first three things it provides me are with what it thinks are the, um, the, the files that I might need. And I've been working on these documents recently, so th these are the ones. But then it also comes up with some ideas about what it thinks is um, uh, a valid search uh, criteria. So it says suggests proposal template, proposal discussion. It's only a little bit further down that it actually starts getting to the documents. Here we've got series suggested websites. We've got the definition proposal. And just while we're in um, the spotlight search, um, you probably noticed if you've uh, installed Big Sur that the windows changed. You always used to get a preview of the document that you were searching for in the sidebar. Now you have to hit the tab key. And if you hit the tab key, now you get your, your preview. And now we can use the arrow keys to go down and start looking at the various documents that we've got here. So we can use the arrow key to go down, but this is pretty time consuming. So if we hold the command key and hit the down arrow, now we start going through the sections rather than the actual in individual files one after the other. But here's the problem. We've got all sorts of stuff that has nothing to do with the documents on our drive. We've got events and reminders, we've got calendar entries, we've got emails. And if we go right down to the bottom, you can see we can actually search the web from here or we can search in the finder. So if I hit search in the finder, it opens up a finder search window. So if we want to look for files on our drive, we're probably better off doing a finder search than a spotlight search. If we just want a generic open file, which would look up definitions and so on, Spotlight's beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. But if we really want to get to looking at inside our computer, the spotlight, the, the finder search is probably a better, a better solution. So there's a number of ways that we can trigger a finder search. You've just seen the first way, we're inside spotlight, we go down to the bottom, we choose search for finder and it uses that criteria you'll see over there, proposal, as my search criteria. Now, you know that command space is your spotlight search. Command option space will open up a search window anywhere, a finder search window anywhere. There's a couple of other ways of doing it. If we are in the finder, we can hit command F or going to the file menu and choosing find, will open up once again, a finder window and in search mode. Uh, and of course, if we're inside the finder, every finder window has a little search bar in it, which we can use to trigger our search. Now, there's a couple of things, a couple of nuances that, that we might want to look at, because if I search for the word proposal, it's going to search my entire drive. Okay? And you can see it's searching this Mac. 
And this is going to search everywhere. It's going to search my home folder. It's going to search the shared folder. It's going to search the system folder. It's going to search the library folder. And we could end up getting all sorts of files that really have absolutely nothing to do with the file that I'm looking for. Um, you can see that all of these odd file names down here, uh, yeah, the PDF documents, they're not necessarily, and this makes it a little bit more complex for me to, to do my search. So if we go to the finder preferences, one of the things that we can do if we go to the advanced settings is we can say when we perform a search, the default is search this Mac, but we can say search the current folder. So if I'm in the, um, I'm inside the, let's say we're in the um, documents folder and I do a find or proposal. Can you see over here, instead of searching the entire Mac, it's searching the documents folder and it's now narrowed it down incredibly. Um, instead of all of those files that I've had, I've got everything inside my documents folder. Conversely, if I go to my home folder and I click find, and I type proposal, we'll see a whole lot more because it's not just searching my documents folder, it's also searching the desktop folder, Creative Cloud files, applications, DW Helper, and so on. So that's the first thing that we can do. The only downside to that is if you are inside a folder and you do a search for that, it will only search that folder. So you need to make sure that you're in the right location if you wanted to search the whole drive, you just click this Mac and we're back to searching the entire drive. So let's have a look at, at how we can become search ninjas. So I've already said that if we do type in the word proposal, proposal, and we search the entire Mac, we will get everything relating to the word, um, uh, relating to the word proposal. You can see zero coin Oakland. There's nothing in the file name over there. Alan Goldberg, your proposal, Vox. Some of them have got the word proposal in, but some of them don't. So if we know that the name is in the file, uh, the, the name proposal is in the file name, we can say, okay, search the file name. And now every single file, uh, file that we see here will have the word proposal in the file name. If you want to go back to show me what everything, I can go back and choose everything. And now you can see at the bottom, 875 items there. Let's go back to the file name. And there's 81 items that have the word proposal in there. So we're already starting to narrow down our files. If we don't know the name of the file, but we want to find something inside that file, just choosing everything is a good start. So let's say something that isn't inside the file name. Let's say Woolworths PDF. I have no idea what this is. Okay. So it's a proposal for, for, for Woolworths and the word proposal is inside, the, inside the, the file. So this is a very useful way of doing it. Okay, so now what if I want to narrow this down a little bit? So we've got um, the, the proposal inside there. When we're in this little file search bar, we've got the ability to narrow down the search. So if I click plus over here, I can say, okay, um, I want to find documents where the, which, which has the word proposal in it, but I only want to find files that were created, um, let's say within the last year. So I'm gonna say created date is within the last one year. And now there's 579 items. So we've narrowed it down to um, 579 from 875 files, it, 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 I think that we have there. So that's okay, but there's still too many files. Now, I'm pretty sure that this was a pages doc. So let's add another, another item. So I can say name, no, I want to find the kind. So if I click kind, I have a series of pop-ups. It could be an app, it could be an archive, a document, an executable, a folder, and so on. Now, there's no pages option over here. It's a word processing document, but there doesn't seem to be an option for word processing. So I can say other and type in pages. And now it's narrowed it down to 12 items from 875 originally. And we've got documents over here, which doesn't have the word proposal inside the name. Any proposal appears anywhere, but it's a pages document. 
Now, what if I'm not sure if it was a pages document or a Word document, or if I wanted to see pages documents or PDFs? So I say, okay, well, let me add another thing over here. I also want to find, find PDF and I choose PDF and everything disappears. Why? Because when you're adding multiple kinds, it says it has to be all of these. And there is no way that a document can be a pages document and a PDF document at the same time. Right? But I want to find all the documents that have the word proposal inside them somewhere. And I'm not sure whether it's a pages document or a PDF. So do I have to do a search just for pages and then just for PDFs and have two separate search searches? No, I don't. Let me delete these two. If we hold down the Alt key, watch what happens to the plus over here. It turns into an ellipsis and it adds a sub search. So now the created date is within the last year. That's still, that's still valid, but we now have a different criteria. So let's say this is a pages document. Kind is pages. And now if we hit plus, because it's going to find any, I also want to find something where kind is PDF. And now we have 132 items. Now I'm going to change this where the name is proposal, just to narrow it down a little bit. And now we've got 25 items. We've got, let's sort by kind. Let's do it that way. So we've got four pages documents and 21 uh, PDFs. So if we wanted to um, find documents, we know the name, we're not sure whether it's a pages or, 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 or a PDF document, we hold the ellipsis key down here and we can say, if any of these are true, it's kind as pages or if it's, if it's a PDF. We've also got some pop-up criteria here. What if we're pretty sure it's not a pages document and it's not a PDF? Well, I can say, if none of these are true, now it's finding documents whose name is a proposal, but they are not PDFs and they are not pages documents. And here we've got an EPUB, here we've got a, a calendar invitation, we've got a Microsoft Word doc, uh, but we've got a number of different documents. And we've also got one more where we say all, and of course, this is exactly the same as if I didn't have this sub search because a document cannot be a pages document and a PDF document at the same time. I wanted to find uh, the proposal document, but if I choose pages, I was a little bit lazy when I created these, these documents and I've got two proposal documents and one of them had the word technician inside. I, I just took original document, I duplicated them, I saved them in different folders. I was too lazy to change the name, but I know one of them addresses technicians and the other doesn't. So now I'm going to say, add a plus here, and I'm gonna say where the contents contains technician. And now I've found my document and you can see over there is the word technician. If I delete that and I get my other document up, you'll see that the word technician doesn't appear on that one, whereas it does appear on this one. So there are times when you actually do want to use all as opposed to any, as opposed to none. So let's just um, add tech back to there. And here we go, there's our, there's our file. So, um, this is a, a very useful way of narrowing down from 875 documents down to a single document because I knew it was a pages document, I knew it was a proposal, and also knew it had the word technician in it. And instead of having to hunt around my file structure manually, like opening up those filing cabinets one at a time, I'm using the smarts of the computer to do it for me. Right, so let's delete these and have a look at the uh, this option as well, because you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds, but there's also an other option. So let's click on other and have a look at it. If we choose other, there are a whole bunch of other options that we can search on. Now, what you will find inside your other will vary compared to mine, because a number of the apps that you've got that install themselves install search, install Spotlight plugins, or tell Spotlight that there are certain criteria that 
Spotlight can search and index them on. So for example, if I remember right, InDesign used to have a flag that used to know whether the document was a two, two, two column document or a three column document. And you could search for two or three columns. You could find all the documents that were laid out with two or three columns. So let's go through uh, a couple of them. And you'll notice that as we scroll through, the items with a checkbox are the ones that appear in the pop-up list. So um, let's see, authors, email addresses, audio bit rates, aperture values. So if you've taken a photograph and you know a bit about photography and you know the f-stop size of a picture was f8 or was f16 or f22, you can search on that criteria, assuming that you've got files that have that there. Um, but I want to have a look for photographs which were being taken in the last year that had maybe the flash fired. So I'm going to say, uh, I want to file, uh, find a file that was created in the last year. That's fine. It's an image file. So let's choose the kind as image. So now we've got 14 items inside there. Hmm, interesting, should be more. Ah, we're looking inside documents. Remember I said, if we change it to search the folder we're on, I want to search this entire Mac. And now there's 551,229 items. Now I want to find, pictures where the flash is fired. So I'm going to choose other and I'm going to search for flash. And we want to see whether the picture is taken using flash or not. I'm just going to say okay. And now I can see flash. Yes. And now there are two files where the flash is fired. There's that one and there's that one. Now these guys aren't necessarily inside my photo library. Um, I think photo library has its own separate database, but I'm just using this as an example. And if I go to the info on this file, this is all the metadata that I was talking about that's stored with the, with the document. We can see its size. We can see what the device was that took it. Uh, iPhone XR, it could have been a Canon camera. So I could have searched for device kind is an Apple or a device is Canon or device is a Nikon. Um, you can see all of this stuff, focal length, alpha channel, no, f-stop, 2.2, exposure program, exposure time, 1 25th of a second. It even stores the latitude and longitude, which we can actually search for. So this is really useful to me. Let's have a, let's ha have a, a look at another thing. Um, I create, um, or rather Craig creates the icons for us for Quicket that we put up and for the emails that we send, send out to you guys. So I'm going to um, go to streaming and I'm going to do find. And you can see it's going to search inside the stream. Once again, I'm going to search for an image, right? And there are 234 images, but the thumbnails that we create are 600 by 600 pixels. And I don't want to go scrolling through all of these. So once again, I'm going to go other, type in pixel. And uh, let's see, width of the document in pixels. This is what I want. Click OK. And pixel width equals 600. And now there are 30 items where I've got pixels which are 600 pixels wide. And if I do a get info on this, you will see over here dimensions 600 by 600. So Again, this is a really, really lovely way. If you know what to search for, you can increase your searching uh, capabilities fantastically. And just to give you um, some ideas of what some of the other things that you can do is if we go to page, you can see page height. So if you're working in A4 documents and you know what the size, you can search for your entire computer where the documents were, um, you know, 290 centimeters, whatever that is in points, you can search for it. Um, number of pages in the document, find all the documents which were greater than four pages or greater than 100 pages or less than 50 pages and so on. So knowing what this gives you um, is it's a worthwhile thing to look through. And if you've got unique applications that you're struggling to find things in, go into the find, go into other and have a look and see if it's got any specific criteria that will let you search. Okay, so that's our searching. Now, I want to do some regular searches. I don't have to do type in that search criteria every time. We can save these, these, these criteria. So I'm going to um, go to this Mac. I'm gonna search for the entire Mac. I'm going to search where the kind is a presentation and this will find keynote files. It'll find PowerPoint files. 
Okay, so that's good. But I want to narrow it down. I only want to find the files that I've, I've, I've that were modified or created actually in the last six months. So let's say within the last six months. And now we've got 93 files. You can see Keynote files and there's PowerPoint files. So there's quite a few files here that I want to see. And now because it's six months, this is a sliding scale. So as I move, if, if we've got a document that's on the last day of the six month, tomorrow when I come here, that file won't be here anymore. And any documents I've done that day will automatically appear. So this is a dynamic search that's happening all the time. Now, I don't want to have to type this, 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 this in every day. So now I'm going to save it. And if my, with my save dialog box, I can give this file, this search a name. So I can say, okay, um, give me, call this presentations um, less than or equal six months. Okay. Now, there's a flag over here that says add to sidebar, and it's usually on by default. This document is saved in my library folder, right? It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little file. But for the moment, let's forget the sidebar and where it's saved to. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to click Save. Close this up. Here's my folder. This folder is minute. It's about 8,000 by, 8, 8, bytes, no, 12 kilobytes in this particular case. So if I want to fill up a megabyte, that's going to, I'm going to need to save about 120 of these just to have one meg. So this isn't going to fill your, your hard drive up at all. If I double click on it, there's all those documents, 93 documents. And this will move through, as I said, in time. So let's do another one. Let's do another find. Um, this time I want to find kind is a numbers doc. And this is something which I've modified within the last 30 days. So I want to see all the documents. All right, let's make it created in the last 30 days. That's too small. Okay, so we've got a few files over here. So make 30. Ah, why? My default is on this Mac. Let's choose this Mac. There we go. The creation date was in the last 30 days. Let's have a look at modified date then in the last 30 days. Okay, so that's 22 items. Once again, I'm going to save this to the desktop. I'll say numbers, last 30 days. And I didn't save it to the right place. I know where I saved it to my library. Let's just move it to the library. Uh, save searches. Yep, there it is. Let me just move it out there. And now if I double click on this one, there's those same documents. Now, I don't necessarily want this cluttering my desktop. So let's make a new window. And I'm going to look for inside Allen doc, doc folders. Okay, let's open that up. And I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, saved searches. Let's open that up. And just before I pop those files in there, if I just do a get info on this, have a look. Let's see if this, this will zoom in. You see over here, this is the query. Um, that, that the, 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 the saved search includes. So we can see it's a numbers document. Um, its range was uh, today minus 30 days and today plus one day, which would include today. So we've got the ability to actually look and see what that search contains. So I'm going to drop that into here. Let's just go up a level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop this into my dock in my sidebar. So now if I want to open this up, I can click on here. There's my saved searches. I can click on that. And there's my numbers documents. And if there's a document that was created um, 30 days ago today, tomorrow, when I come to do my search, it won't be there. So I've just got this running tally. And I can create as many complex or simple searches that I want to um, to, to um, narrow down and finesse my searches and find the files if I want to make a folder that shows me the doc the, the applications I used in the last two days without having to hunt for them it will appear there so I can customize this to my heart's, heart's delight and then save those searches and then um, it does it for me
we're making the computer work for us rather than us working for the computer. If I, let me just do another search. Let's uh, um, search for, uh, okay, let's just do the same one, presentations. Search the entire Mac, okay. If we save this and we add it to the sidebar, it, I think I showed you before that it pops it into a special folder that's inside your library. You know, it's inside your home folder, library, saved searches. And you're not really interested in where it saves it because you've added it to the sidebar. And if you see that little gear over here, that is a saved search. So I'm just gonna cancel that. And if you have a look at the presentations icon over here, um, it's showing me that the kind is keynote. It's already showing me what the, the search criteria is. If I want to amend the, uh, the search criteria, this is one of the nice things about putting it in the sidebar. If I right click on it, I can show the search criteria. By default, it doesn't sh show it. So this is the search criteria for this. I can now go in and amend the search criteria. I can say, you know, content contains um, education. And now it narrows it down to 40 items. So um, it, when you're putting in the search bar, it's very, very easy to come up with your criteria, save it again, amend the search criteria. Um, this is a lovely little benefit to putting it in, inside the sidebar. So that's my presentation. Um, we're gonna end screen sharing and open it up for questions, guys. Michael. Yeah, hi, sorry, I, so um, I, I'm gonna have to, this is excellent, I mean, uh, I've hardly ever used the power of the spotlight, but, and it generally works for me and I normally find what I want, but I didn't realize you can go into quite such detail, but now where you lost me was, um, was at the beginning, you went to, to search this Mac, Yes. And then it gave you that you can either go this Mac or documents, I think. Is that right? Not this Mac or documents, but this Mac or whatever folder you happen to be in. Okay. Or whatever folder. Now, the default saw, is search I, the entire Mac. Right. But if right. you wanted it to narrow down, if you always keep your documents inside your documents folder, you could change it to your current folder. And then when you were in that folder, do a search, it would only search inside there, which would narrow it down a lot. It does confuse I, people, myself included, because I was trying to do some searches and I was on the desktop and I had to go back to the appropriate folder. But it's just something that you choose. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a custom setting that will work whichever way works best for you. So, so if I go to proposal, which is, I just typed it in now, yep. uh, it gives me bookmarks and history definitions and PDF documents and so on. And if you look at the top of the bar, is it saying search this Mac? No. That's why I, uh, that's where I kind of lost you a bit there, but I, I um, yeah, it just simply says, so I, uh, so I went to this, let me do this again. Yeah, I went to spotlight. I typed in proposal. Did you go to spotlight or did you create a find the search window? Uh, no, I went to spotlight. Let me do it again. I'm on spotlight. No, you no. don't want to be in spotlight. Oh, you want to go to the file menu and choose find, which is the bottom item. I uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I just made the assumption. So I got to go to the file menu and then go to the bottom. It says find. Yep. Ah, right. <laughs> okay. So that's what I was saying. You know, Spotlight is beautiful. Yes. But it searches everywhere and it searches the web and it gives you Siri suggestions and Spotlight yes. suggestions. Yes. So if you're literally just looking for documents on your computer, <laughs> you're probably better served by doing a finder find than a Spotlight find. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. No. the confusion comes in is because the finder uses Spotlight as its index, but you've already narrowed it down. You've told it, I'm not interested in def dictionary definitions. I'm not interested in Safari results. I'm not interested in map locations. I'm just looking for documents. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> this is and amazing. Can you see when you do the search now, does it say this Mac at the top? It it uh, it does. It does. Yes. It says this Mac or desktop at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably the folder that you started the search from. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is awesome. You know, I didn't even know this existed. Why I do this wonderful course. I did not even know this existed. I mean, it's embarrassing. I feel ashamed. I have to go and I'm going to have to, um, yeah. Just put my dog glasses on. RTFM or join us. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so the rest now I get it. Uh, I was absolutely confused as to how you got there. So okay, 
That's All why right. I started off and, and made the comparison between searching yep. using the spotlight yep. search bar yep. or using a finder window. Right. Thanks, Alan. I have a question. Um, if I get a, a document in um, through mail, um, will it will it will it pick it up here, or do I physically have to save it to a folder um, on either my machine or in iCloud? No, physically. If you're searching for the entire drive, if you're have a look when we get back. If, if you're going to watch the video afterwards, you'll see that when I choose, chose the word proposal yeah. uh, and I did it inside the finder and I, before I narrowed it down to pages and PDFs, there were um, mail documents, there were email documents, there were, those are all files that are inside Outlook and, and your Apple Mail, um, your Apple Mail index. Okay, thanks. Yep. Thanks very much, everybody. Have Thank yourself you. a fantastic Thank weekend you. and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yep, you did. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.